This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, hello everyone out there in author and publishing land as we come into this new year with so much on our plate. One of them, for a lot of you, is to write the first book. For others, it's to write another book, maybe a series of books or something brand spanking new. But whatever it is, we've got the perfect person to talk about writing the book. Like, how about writing your book in a flash? Well, we're going to define what a flash is. With me is the amazing, awesome, unbelievable Dan Janelle. Dan is an author himself. He is an excellent speaker, and he's also a book coach. He's one of the founding fathers, if you can believe this, of internet marketing and publicity. And he goes back to writing books back into the mid-90s. Um, he is the visionary and the really the driver of PR leads to profits.com. And for Dan himself, he's not just a one book pony, he's a 13 book pony. And he writes in the business book arena, the internet and marketing and publicity. His latest and greatest book is Write Your Book in a Flash. Hey, Dan, welcome. Thank you, Judith. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Well, let's just kind of let's just kind of talk about the changing book world as you see it. Um, and I'd love to have you give me some twists from the internet marketing side. I'd love to have you because you've got, you know, you've got roots in all these areas, Dan. You're kind of like this umbrella with little spokes coming down. We've got this <laughs> internet marketing. I mean, just let's create the visual here. We've got all these little spokes coming down. You've got this overall protection thing. And we've got this 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 side that's come down that deals with really internet marketing, which is crucial. Um, and you really are a pioneer in it. Um, and then you've got the the whole concept of gee, there's promotion and publicity that goes along. And then another c- critical component, maybe we have to think of this as a three legged stool, um, of, of getting the book done and out there and viable. So we have all kinds of avenues that we can go over with our hour together today. Great. Lead the way. I'm happy to follow your lead. Oh, oh, good. So I get to lead it. So let's let's start with why don't we start with um, let's start with writing the book. Let's get the book written. But I think what we need to address also is that there's things that you should you meaning listener. That's you. Uh, the author needs to be doing why you're writing the book to get ready to support the book so it has some legs and it doesn't limp along when it's ready. Would that be fair to to go down that avenue, Dan? Sure. I see a lot of people writing books these days, not because they plan to sell 10,000 copies or a million copies of books, Mm -hmm. but they want to write a big business card. They want the book to help them get the publish, get the, get more consulting or more speaking or bring their speaking fees up to the next higher level. So they write the big business card book that has about 25 to 30,000 words, about 10 chapters, and all of those chapters support the idea that I can lead you from mess to success. I want you to read this book so you can see that you now get to know, like, and trust me so I can serve as your guide to help you build your business and take it to the next level. I see that as a big trend in the publishing industry today. So again, we're de- these people are not interested in selling 10,000 books, although they'd love to sell 10,000 books, but they realize that with the royalties and such like that, there's only so much money to be made, whereas they get a few uh, contracts for consulting or coaching or speaking, they can uh, make a lot more money from one speech than they can from 
a couple of dozen or a couple of hundred books. That's one of the biggest trends I'm seeing right now. Mm -hmm. Well, so what you're doing is is talking about the modern day um, expanded lead generator. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because you can go to a networking meeting and everyone gives you their business card and no one stands out. Uh, but if someone gives you a book or shows you the, the book, then suddenly you are the expert because people think that authors walk on water. I mean, to, to, to be known as a published author is, uh, is a big, big deal. You're seen as the expert then. And that places you above everyone else. And frankly, if you're a speaker, it's the minimum entry point because every meeting planner expects a speaker to have written a book. And if you haven't written a book, then you probably won't get the speech at all. But for the coaches and consultants, many of them have not written books yet. So if you have written a book, then you will stand uh, head and shoulders above those who haven't written a book. So it's a great way to build your credibility. Well, let me add into this that um, you and I both go to a lot of events, um, and I, I come away with a couple of big button, button pushers, people who don't put phone numbers and emails on their business cards. And I'm telling you, Dan, I throw those away. I'm, I'm, you're, you're asking <laughs> me to search through and hunt through your website, and if I'm lucky, I might find it. That's not going to work for me. But here's what's cool about a book, and you're talking about a small book, which, uh, you know, I've been saying for a long time, short is the new black. And that you're talking about a shorty, shorty book, which is, is a good thing because people can get through it. But you know what, Dan, if, if a book is put together well and it reads well, people don't throw it away like they throw away business cards. That's so true. In fact, People may not even read your book, but they won't throw it away. What they mm -hmm. will do mm -hmm. is they'll mm -hmm. look at the front cover. So you mm -hmm. want a front cover that positions you as a true professional. Uh, yep. So you want to work with, work with a book designer who can really create a book that pops and really shows you to be the professional that you are. And if you're writing a spiritual book, then it has a spiritual cover. If you're writing more of a co comedy kind of book, it has a funnier kind of cover. So you want that cover to uh, engage your audience and express your personality and look like all the other uh, standards of, of, your, of, your, of your genre. So what I did for my first book, I looked at uh, all the best-selling books of all time, including Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, and I figured if that book is sold for all these years, he must be doing something right. So I had my designer literally copy <laughs> as much as he could, uh, that cover, you know, with the same typeface, with, of course, the title of my book was different, and uh, put my picture where Dale Carnegie's picture was, and it looked very professional. So, so that was good. The other thing you want people to read, at the very minimum, is the back cover. And the back cover is really your sales material. And I see a lot of people screw this up. The back I know. cover should really answer... <laughs> yeah, the back cover should really answer a couple of key questions like who is this book for? How will they benefit? How is it different from every other book in the marketplace? And why are you the right person to write this book? And every one of your prospects who sees that, even if they don't read anything else in the book, they'll know that you are the trusted guide who would lead them from mess to success. And I want to harken back to something you said at the beginning of this question was that they never throw out a book. And that is true, because if they just put your book on their bookcase, it stands there as a silent salesperson forever. So they may not need your services today, but six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, they're going to say, oh, wasn't there a guy I met at this networking thing? Or wasn't there a person mm -hmm. I saw? And I, I think she wrote a book. And what was the title? I think it had an orange cover. There it is in my bookcase. There it is. It's, it's Judith's book. That's right. It's Judith Bryles. That's the one I need to hire. Let me call her up. Where's her phone number? Oh, cool. I do go. have a you book with sale. an orange cover. I do have a book with I... an orange cover. <laughs> hey, okay. So Dan... I know you very well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you, uh, you reeled off four critical questions um, that every book cover will answer and the back cover. 
So if you want to just kind of kiss on those one more time, because I want everyone to really understand this, um, you know, my marketing mind really has to, it really bangs on this all the time. And yet so many authors don't get it when they understand the power of your back cover real estate. And it's so powerful. So Dan, if you will just kind of go over those four quickies that, you know, from starting with who, you know, who is this specifically for? Right, right. Who is the book for? Mm -hmm. How will they benefit? How is this Mm -hmm. book different from the other books on the market? And why are you the right person to write this book? And by the way, when you write this down, it's not just the back cover copy of your book. It's also the material that stands on your web page that lets people know about the book and why they need to buy it. It also stands as the material on your Amazon book page. So you're getting triple duty out of this one exercise. And that's just one exercise from my, that you'll see in my book, Write Your Book in a Flash. We also have you know, uh, downloadable worksheets as well, so you can download it, print it out, you know, try, try your hand at it. If it doesn't look good, tear it up, print out another sheet, <laughs> and do it again. Um, but I think that's one of the first things I do in my coaching program is we get those 400 words down And then people really get a good feel for what their book should be about. And you mentioned the umbrella principle at the beginning of the talk here. This is so true. If you have Mm -hmm. the umbrella, everything hangs down nicely from there. I'm working with a new coaching client now, and he, uh, I have to say, uh, just did not get it. And he canceled our (laughs) meeting, which happens uh, when people don't do the work and they're frustrated Mm -hmm. and we have to get them Mm -hmm. back on track. And I said, well, you know, he said, I, I, I wrote this, but it really sucks, and I really can't get my arms around it. I've had so many great ideas, but I just can't narrow it down to this little 400 words, and, you know, you want one idea. Well, And you're just like, you know, he's making it more complicated than it should be. And I said, imagine that a meeting planner called you to give a speech, and they need 40 words to put in the program. What 40 words are you going to use to describe your, your, your speech? And then it comes to him, and he's like, oh, well, that's easy. Well, <laughs> Whatever right. metaphor works for you is fine. We'll be right back with that. Well, hold that thought. Here we come. I'm back again with author you, your guide to book publishing, and Dan Janelle on book power. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. there a book in you or another author you shows you how to create develop and publish your book without being hoodwinked if you already have a book out you will find a supportive and brainstorming community that is connected and creative no matter where you live author you brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author you extravaganza it has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics through author use extensive network members enjoy exclusive benefits including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publishing author use the premier authoring resource in the country creating community education guidance vision and success for the serious author if you want to create a book that has pizzazz punch and panache author you is for you Timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted on its social media platforms, and it is free. Discover Author U, where authors go to become seriously successful. Join Author U today at authoru.org. First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop sizzle and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience and your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand nick selinger of nz graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts with over 20 years of experience in graphic design he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, 
business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Are you confused about publishing options? Do you know which printing option is best for your book? Does your stomach flip when you think about selling books? Or do you feel overwhelmed with what to do about book marketing and publicity? Get the answers and much more. Get them and from someone who knows publishing inside and out from both the traditional and independent sides how to make a successful book. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so. Or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand and platform, and is a success, a bestseller. It is your choice. You choose. If you want author and publishing success, you want Judith Bryles as your book coach. Sign up for her weekly blogs and e-zine at thebookshepherd.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, with me today is Dan Janelle. Dan is a prolific author in his own right, and the author of 13 books, with his latest book, Write Your Book in a Flash, which I love the title. Um, and Dan and I go back a long, long way, but we have been, um, you know, I'm someone who really believes in, I'm a binge writer, and I do write it in a flash. That doesn't mean that it's polished in a flash. But it gets it done so then you can get the other people involved to make your word shine. Would you agree with that, Dan, that this is what we're talking about a little bit? Exactly. You know, Annie Lamott wrote the the, the best book ever on writing uh, bird by bird, an odd name, bird by bird. Uh, I was said, just looking uh, at that book today, actually. Yeah. It's been a bestseller for 20 years. I hope yes. my book has to become a bestseller for 20 years. And <laughs> she said that uh, basically all first drafts are shitty, pardon my French. And But the whole idea is to you know, get it down, then clean it up. And people ask me, can you really write the book in the flash? And by the way, what is a flash? And I think it, it, it's different for different people. I know that my webmaster wrote his book literally in a weekend. And there are people who say you can write your book in a weekend. And, and that's true. I mean, if you have all the ideas in your head and you feel all the time in the world, you have no distractions, you have no kids, you have no full-time job, you have no dog that needs to be walked, whatever, then you can sit down and just empty out your head and write the book as fast as your fingers can fly. That's really true. I have a number of clients who develop writer's block and they have every excuse under the sun for not writing their book. It's like I've, I've cataloged 20 of them. In fact, I have a whole chapter in my book on these writer block questions and how to overcome writer's block. And you can download that chapter for free on my website, which is the name of the book, writeyourbookinaflash.com. And I'll just go over a couple of questions that people have. You know, they say, oh, I don't have time to write the book. I have a job. I have kids, whatever. Well, somehow these same people can watch television for three hours a night. <laughs> you know, uh, mm -hmm. I wrote a book literally using just 15 minutes a day. I, I set my my uh, my timer on my iPhone for 15 minutes. I sat down and religiously just wrote for 15 minutes and the alarm went off and I either stopped or I had so much energy and so many good ideas. It just propelled me to write until I was done. But when that timer went off, it felt like I had accomplished something. And I have to tell you, if you can't devote 15 minutes a day to doing something, whether it be writing a book or studying Spanish or playing a guitar, then you really don't want to learn how to play the guitar or study Spanish or, or write your mm -hmm. book. And if that's the case, then you should hire a ghostwriter and just be honest with yourself. Cause, and I say the things about Spanish and guitar, because that's me. I have this little spreadsheet set up, and if I do the 15 minutes of Spanish a day, I put a little mark in there. If I go to yoga, I put a little mark in there. And if I don't, then I can see what, what I have done or what I, what I haven't done. And frankly, I'm never going to become Eric Clapton <laughs> based on this spreadsheet. So 
Uh, if I want to hear great guitar music, it's not going to come from my fingers. It's going to come from uh, my, my MP3 player. And if you want to write your book, then you have to at least commit to doing 15 minutes a day every day. And if you can't do that, then there's something wrong. But you can definitely find 15 minutes to write your book. Yeah, I really agree. And I think that one thing you did kiss on that if you find yourself all of a sudden going into the zone, stay there. I'm going to tell you people to stay there. Um, and because, and maybe you end up going for an hour or two hours and you just block everything out. But if you give yourself that one window and open it and you commit to that, whether it's 15 minutes or 20 or whatever number you come up with, but you commit to it, you're going to get something accomplished. It, it's that commitment that has to be done. Don't you agree, Dan? Uh, I agree. And I also think uh, it's the principle of the first step. I just created mm-hmm. that principle, by the way. It's like uh, if, if you're going to run, the, the hardest thing to do is to take that first step. If you're going to do a sit-up, the hardest thing to do is that first sit-up. If you can lay down on the floor and do that first sit-up, you can do the second and the third and the fourth until your abs just say, I'm done. But uh, the first one is always the hardest. And it's mm-hmm. the same way with writing. In fact, sometimes I'll trick myself into writing by writing an email or writing something simple just to like prime the pump and then say, okay, I've done these easy things. Now I can get back to writing my chapter and or I'll reread a previous chapter. So that'll remind me of what I'm writing about or look at my notes and, you know, sort of get back in gear. So sometimes you need that little push and that's fine. And different people have different motivations and different uh, things that turn them on and whatever works for you is the right thing. What I find a lot of people doing is they, tur- they talk themselves out of writing their book because they say, oh, there are only 50 books about this. Who am I to write this book? There's someone else who's better than this. You know, why am I doing this? And you can easily talk yourself out of it. But I tell you, no one has your life experiences. That's what makes your book different from all the other self-help books out there. Because let's face it, there's nothing new in a self-help book except your experiences. I've seen a million marketing books and sales books. They're all the same except for people's personal experiences. So you might have experience selling in the HVAC industry or in the aerospace industry. That's what makes, that's what makes your book different from all the other generic books on sales or marketing. So go with what makes you, you, and then you'll find it's really easy to write the book because you're just relating all of your past experiences. It's fun that way. It's like sharing stories with friends. Exactly. And when you're talking about using just your sales, your salesperson analogy, that there, there's a gazillion salespeople out there, a gazillion of them, but there are only a few that really soar. So that's what their unique difference is, which goes back to our four questions. Who are you writing for? What's the benefit you bring to them? How are you different from the rest of the market? Because you've really done it. And what expertise brings you to the party? So um, and, and that really weaves through, you know, Dan, the last book I wrote, um, the one I currently have out, have been promoting the how to create a million dollar speech was written in a week, one intense week. I just went underground, no outside noise. I started at four in the morning and I stopped at seven and I had a couple of bathroom breaks. I got to go get fresh tea. I gave myself a 15 minute time to go get something to bring back to eat with me, and it was myopically done in approximately 14-hour days, seven days, and I had the entire draft done. So, you know, if you started breaking that down in 15-minute days or 15-minute slots, going back to your theory here, uh, so that's four of them. So four times 14 times seven, you know, you can do it, people. You can do it. That's what we're saying. You, re- you really can. If you, if you could write, say, 500 words in 15 minutes, which should be easy. I'm sure everyone on this call has written a blog post of 500 words in 15 minutes. Just think of it that way. I'm just writing another blog post. Well, the blog post happens to be the first of your book or the middle of a chapter here or the middle of a chapter there. And uh, you just look at your outline so you'll never run out of ideas. I firmly believe that if you have a, a really detailed outline and you just go through that as your literally filling in the blanks on a, uh, on a, on a paint by numbers picture mm-hmm. or putting in the pieces of a puzzle on a crossword uh, or, a pu- or a jigsaw puzzle, rather. It's the same basic idea. So you say, I feel like writing something simple today. I'm going to uh, 
just write all the quotes that I'm going to use in the front uh, of each of the chapters and just go online and you do your research and you find all those quotes. Bingo, the timer goes off, you're done. The next day you do something else that may be a little bit more challenging if you feel up to it. And that's cool. And if you do 500 words a day, and if we're looking at a book that has maybe 30,000 words, do the math. That's like 60 days, 60 days, 500 words, 30,000 words. You'll have a book done in two months of just 15 minute uh, activities. So you don't have to kill yourself to do this like you just did. But if you can, <laughs> that's fine, too. It's whatever but, hey, works hey, but, for you because we I, all have I, different I, lifestyles and demands. Dan, I was in the Caribbean, so I wasn't killing myself. I was, <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was in a good spot. All right. So let, let's let's uh, transition here a little bit. The thing is, you can do it. That's what both Dan and I are saying. If this is what your goal is. And you're really going to hang that carrot out there and like doing it in the two month period. Um, that's where you want to bring it in and, and just, you just go. And are you going to have a polished, I mean, a really polished letter, perfect uh, grammar, perfect in those 15 minutes? Nope. You're not. Don't beat yourself up. This is the brain dump to get it out. And then you're going to come back and fine tune it. And I think, Dan, that's where a lot of authors get stuck. They're trying to come out with perfection at the gate, and and it doesn't happen. That's so true. I've done a lot of research on this, and a lot of people have written articles on the fact that the brain works in not so mysterious ways. When you're writing, it's in one mode. When you're editing, it's in another mode. So mm -hmm. if you're going constantly between writing and editing, you're really mm -hmm. messing up your brain. So mm -hmm. you should say to yourself, I'm just going to write for 15 minutes, then I'm going to edit for 15 minutes if, or any numbers you want to put in there. I'm not, there's no hard and fast rule there, but don't do it at the same time. And I love your description of like you, the first half, just do a brain dump. Don't worry about periods and commas and paragraphs and whatever. Mm. Just get it out there because I find it's a lot easier to get to write it all down and then trim back and keep what's what's best. You, you know, the old story about Michelangelo. They asked him, how did you create David? He said, well, I saw this block of marble and I chopped away everything that wasn't David. And I, I take the same approach when I do my content uh, or my, when I do my developmental editing and I look at all the words there and maybe, you know, someone's given me 50 different blog posts they've written and, and their speeches and their slides mm -hmm. and whatever. And, and I cut away everything that isn't David. And what's left is a masterpiece of a book. And that's what you should really be looking for. Get it all down and then clean it all up. All right. And with that, we're going to go to our next break. And when we come back, we're going to dig deeper. your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these Discover the power of you and your book at the Judith Bryles Unplugged events. Each summer, Judith Bryles Book Marketing Unplugged unfolds over three intensive days working with just Judith. You get publishing strategies, author and book platforms, book marketing panache and pizzazz, and authoring tools to take you and your book to rock star success. In the fall and winter, Judith Bryles Speaking Unplugged includes Judith as your coach and mentor during two powerful days. You will learn how to structure a speech, how to create openings and closings, how to find gigs that pay you and sell your books, and you will get one-on-one -on -one coaching. Go to thebookshepherd.com and click on the events tab to learn how to participate at the next Unplugged Workshop event. Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972. They believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. 
They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, with me again is Dan Janelle. He's the author of the brand spanking hot new best-selling book called Write Your Book in a Flash. And, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about, so what do you do if you get stuck a little bit? And uh, Dan shared some tips on um, and dealing with writer's block. But I'd like to just take it a step further. What if your writing really isn't your forte? What if your writing isn't the gift you thought that your fingers would generate with the brilliant ideas in your, uh, in your mind? Exactly. Uh, you know, maybe your writing just sucks. What do you do? You got to call in someone. Uh, it's the Ghostbusters. The right busters need to come in. <laughs> who who are you gonna call? You can do that little little ditty here. Who are you gonna call? Who are the right busters or the righty busters? So Dan, what do you what do you do here? Okay. Well, for, first of all, uh, let, let's not take such a dire picture. I'm sure that everyone who's on the call here is, is a very good writer. But no matter how good a writer you are, it can always be improved because. Writing should not be a solitary uh, ex, uh, expedition, although many people treat it that way. You know, when I, when I was researching my book, I spoke to Ken Blanchard, the author of The One Minute Manager and the uh, uh, more than 60 other books. And he said that every one of his books he wrote with a co-author. And I said, why? You're a brilliant mm -hmm. guy. You, know, you sold millions of books with The One Minute Manager. Who were my cheese? These are, these are classic books. Why do you need a co-writer? And he said, because I learn so much from them. And I thought, wow, if that isn't humble, I don't know what is. So I mm. think we could all step down from our high horse and say, you know, we may think we're really hot stuff, and many of us are, but our work can always be improved by hiring a content development editor or a ghostwriter or a marketer to help us work through those points that we, we're blind to. We, we don't know what, what is good or bad. We think we know, but the public, uh, well, the public, uh, let's, let's not go to the public because they're not trained experts. You don't want your sister-in-law to review your manuscript and say she likes it or doesn't like it. She's not a trained expert. You want a book coach who's been there and done that. You want a, a, a developmental editor who's written books, who's edited books, who, who knows what they're doing. You want a professional to give you professional feedback. That's really, really key, important, and it will help any book become better. Uh, in fact, when I wrote my book, I was saying, you know, I was glad that I got uh, comments from beta readers because they, they laughed at my jokes, and when they didn't, I realized that the joke wasn't funny. When they said, I don't understand this, then that pointed out to me that, I thought I'd done a good job explaining this process, but if they didn't understand it, then I was wrong. Not them being wrong, I was wrong. And I swallowed my pride, 
and I swallowed my ego and said, I have to make this so that people understand it. And that way, we, we all created a better book. And I think that's really the truth here is that it takes a village to create a book. And uh, this isn't just some poppycock. It's really like um, writers write manuscripts. And then the publisher turns that manuscript into a book because you need copy editors and line editors. You need illustrators and designers. You need cover designers. You need uh, artists and illustrators. You need uh, marketing people. It really does take a lot of people to make a book, uh, to to take that manuscript that you wrote and turn it into a book and turn it into the success that you want it to be. Well, you know, I, I, I love what you're saying. In fact, I had a situation experience where it's one of my clients, um, and, you, and you'd love this, Dan, that literally he came in and with his academically flavored manuscript for the general public. And I'm going through it, and I'm thinking, is this, was this part of his dissertation? What the heck? A 25-page bibliography? I mean, I was stunned. And, and, and Ron will tell you the next thing he heard was a thud because I threw the whole thing on the floor. Literally, I dumped it on the floor and I just told them, open up your computer and you and I are going to write this together. Let's go. <laughs> That's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> and we threw everything out. Everything got thrown out. And he, he just writing in a regular uh, normalese like you and I are talking right now, wasn't his skill. He was an academician, and it's a different jargon, different jargon. Sure. Let me tell you a story about one of my clients that I was doing developmental editing for. Uh, She was writing a self-help book for women, uh, mothers, uh, the ages of 35 to 50, who Mm -hmm. have kids who no longer need them. And what I mean by that, I say that, you know, when you're six, it's, Mommy, I need you. Mommy, come here. Mommy, look at this. When they're 16, it's like, mom, leave me alone. Give me space. So she positioned the book perfectly. And I read the book, and it it was good. But in the middle of chapter three, she had a real personal story. She said, I have these big, ugly earthworms on my body. They're they're stretch marks. Uh, They they represent the four children I gave birth to. Uh, I gained 180 pounds, and I've lost all but 20 pounds, and I don't know if I'll ever lose those 20 pounds, but this, these are my badges of honor. These are my stretch marks, and I wear them as badges of honor because I bore these children. And I said, wow, that's a great story. I've never heard anything like that before. That's really your signature story. That should really be the first story in your chapter, in the book. And she said, you're right. And then I thought about it for a little bit more. I said, stretch marks? This is a book about goal setting? What is a better metaphor for for goals and going beyond your goals than stretching and having stretch marks so mm-hmm. now we had the name of her book she had the content but she didn't see how much gold there was she had that story buried in the middle of chapter three and now it's the name of her book and it's her signature story <laughs> and, and uh, we're both very very happy with that that's what having another set of eyes can do to bring your book to life and make it shine well the reality is that sometimes you're just too close to it you're just too close to it and you do need those those other eyes are going to be the aha i mean when i've worked with authors who have struggled with the title or they don't know what the chapter is and i said just just wait it's in there the gems are in there let they'll come out Just, just go ahead and get the book done um, and then we'll see what surfaces, like you're finding that nugget, the golden nugget in chapter three that literally took it um, to a whole nother level, which is really exciting. At least it is oh, to it, me. It, 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 it is. It was like what, once you hit on it, it's like, you know, you str- it's like, again, you, I love the gold analogy. It's like you're striking uh, and you're digging and you're digging. And then finally you hit the right. Uh, uh, load and you, you, this gold or this oil just springs up there. It's like, wow, this is what it's all about. This, and, and, you, and you just know. You just know it works. It's like a joke. Either mm-hmm. it's funny or it isn't funny. When it's funny, you're laughing your butt off and everyone knows it's funny. I you know. know. I, was at a, I, I, was at a, 
I, I was at a conference last week, and I was sitting next to this woman who told me that she had a problem with this ghostwriter that she had hired. And she said this woman just took over her voice, and it wasn't her voice anymore. And and I said, well, you know, that, that, that could be a problem. So she said, how do you avoid that when you do your books? And I say, well, first of all, I talk to the client, so I get a feel for their tone and their voice and what words they use. Are they using Latin-based words? Are they using Anglo-Saxon words? You know, you know, come uh, come here as opposed to come yonder. You know, that's uh, you know, Latin words have more syllables. Uh, people understand Anglo-Saxon words a whole lot better. So that's that's one thing. The other thing I said is like when I when I start to write, I, I read authors who I admire, and somehow I start to adapt to their tone and their style. So if you read Hemingway, you're going to start writing in short sentences. And I said to her, what books do you read? What books do you like? And I'll read those books, so I'll get a a feeling for the kinds of writing you want it to sound like as well. So if you use those kinds of ideas, uh, your ghostwriter can more easily pick up your tone, your voice, your syntax, and we'll make it the book you want it to be. So it sounds like you. Which is just so essential. And, 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 and as the woman said when she approached you, is the, if, it's, if it, you really see it's a wrong fit, then undo it. Get out of it because it's the wrong fit. And oh, otherwise, totally. you're going to be in misery and agony, and it's just not going to be the book. Uh, you, you end up creating a book at some sort, but it's not going to be a book that you have pride with. It's not going to be the book oh, it, that, 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 you know, you shout out about. It, it, exactly. You know, I, I use this analogy. It's like when you, when you try on a new pair of shoes at Nordstrom and they don't mm-hmm. fit, well, they're not going to fit any better a week later. They're just going to pinch and make your life miserable mm-hmm. until you just throw them out because you can't wear them. It's the same thing with a ghostwriter or an editor. If you don't have the right personality or the right fit, or if you don't have the right kind of boundaries, then it's just not going to work. Like if, if you send an email and you expect to hear back in five minutes and they don't respond back for half an hour and you get upset because you wanted like five minutes and they think they're doing great because they responded in half an hour, there's going to be a problem. Uh, so you need to establish those boundaries right away. I mean, can you call them after five o'clock? Will they work on weekends? Do you work on weekends? I'm not saying there's a right or wrong here. I'm just saying you both have to agree on each other's styles so you don't get ticked off at each other uh, when, you know, you might send them a note at 4.59 on Friday and they don't get back mm-hmm. to you until first thing Monday morning. You're saying, where are they? And you have three days to get upset with them when in reality, you know, they're entitled to a, a, a weekend or they may constantly work on weekends and they're wondering how come you're not responding back to their messages so they can take the next step. So you need to work on those boundaries. Yeah. Boundaries, I think are really important, this whole thing. All right. So I, you know, I know that we've got a little bit left in this segment and then one final segment. And I wanted to talk about some of the things when we come back, literally at the end of the segment, when we come back, let's talk about some of the marketing that goes along with this. This is author you, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The Book Shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experience. Shepherd and Guide to collaborate with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You do not need more problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Riles will shepherd you through the maze and chaos. At times, she has had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher, by a publishing service provider. If you want author and book success, connect with her today at thebookshepherd.com. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in southern Illinois. 
employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Ryle. With me today is Dan Janelle. He's the author of, of many books, 13 of them, but number 13, lucky number 13, is Write Your Book in a Flash. And I will tell everyone it has been number one, number, number one, one, number, number one on Amazon for days and days and days and days. Um, so that's a good thing. And, and Dan has sold, um, if some of you have heard me say this before, but, you know, the average self-published book sells a hundred copies. Dan in two weeks has done a thousand copies. I love that story, Dan. And that he, you know, he, it's a good book. I'll recommend that. And, but he's also got some smarts and some savvy because he does know how to do promotional related things. So Dan, can you put on your, your PR type hat for, for a few minutes? And sure, happy the, to help. Yeah, what are the things that you did that you think you kickstarted it? Uh, the okay. buzz. Well, the book. Sure. Well, um, this most recent buzz, I really have to uh, uh, lay at the hands of my publisher. They did a great job. They did what's called a ninety-nine cent promotion, and uh, the book has been out since April, and it sold reasonably well through then. And Amazon lets you do what they call the ninety-nine cent promotion once every few months. So my publisher lowered the price of the ebook from three dollars and ninety nine cents to just ninety nine cents, and you think like, that's, what's the big deal? Three dollars is no, no great. Uh, uh, who can't afford three, four dollars for a book? But you wouldn't believe how many people just chomped at the bit when they saw the price of the book was ninety nine cents. Maybe it meant that it was printed on new websites that promote books for 99 cents. I'm not quite sure about all the mechanics about how they did it. I need mm -hmm. to go to a webinar and learn how these 99 cent things work. All I know is they work. Several hundred copies were sold. Um, my book went from about number 40,000 on Kindle, which isn't bad, to number 6,000 on Kindle, which is amazing. It was always number four, five, six, or seven or eight in three categories like editing and research and uh, publishing. And overnight, it became number one in all those categories and stayed there for a full week. So that was, that was, that was great. <laughs> My publisher was happy. I was happy. Hundreds of people who bought the book were happy. So, uh, so that was really cool. So that's one of the things you can do to, to give your book another kickstart because everyone puts so much emphasis into the launch, which is very important. But after the launch, people, many people just burnt out <laughs> and they say, what do I do next? And there are a number of things you can do. But again, this 99 cent promotion is something that you should definitely put into your marketing calendar because I got to tell you from personal experience. It works. It blew me away on how effective it was. Well, not only that, when you do those 99 cent promotion, which only lasts it's a short period, and then they start bumping them up to their next level, they're back up to the at three buck, buck price, three ninety nine, whatever it was, is that it the momentum has started, and the buzz goes out, and other people the, the sales continue even though it's not 99 cents anymore. So it's kind of cool. That that, that's so true. In fact, I looked at my stats today, 
And I noticed that sales of the print edition of the book suddenly took off. And I have to mm-hmm. think that the two are related. So uh, I agree with your words. It, it, it kick-started the whole promotion again, which is wonderful. Well, I, you know, I had a conversation with Jeff Bezos at a conference one time, and he told me that ebooks actually propel print sales, that people will get the ebook and they, then they want to get a hold of it. You know, and I've always said this to people, that you need to understand that ebooks are really just rented. The person who supplies the ebook to you basically is leasing it. You're not buying it. You're leasing it. And they at any time can pull the book down. And that's kind of a shock to them. So hmm. if you want if you want something permanent that you sh- certainly, you know, I have ebooks, I audio books, I've got print books. I tell people, you, authors, you need to do them all. But you need to recognize that ebooks can disappear. It's happened before. And that, you know, we called it Kobo Gate uh, a year ago when Kobo and then Amazon and several of the other online sellers yanked down a whole series of ebooks. Wow, so, I didn't know that. Oh. I have gotten. I have gotten emails from people who said they bought my ebook. They liked it so much. They wanted to get the print edition so they could underline things and yep. flag pages and write in, in the margins. And, you know, I don't know if that's a, 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 an age thing. You know, I don't know if baby boomers are more likely to do that than millennials. I just don't know. Um, but publishing definitely has changed. I saw a statistic that said that audiobooks are becoming the fastest growing part of the publishing market. They are. They have been. writing and jogging. Yep. Yeah, sure. Yep, they're 30%. In fact, here's the, the data on this, that they're projecting that audiobooks were, will eclipse ebooks within three years in overall wow. sales. So that's where, that's where that's going on. All right, so a couple of minutes left. Let's talk about what someone should be doing. You got, you've, you've done your book in a flash. You got it done. My golly, it's in hand. What should we be doing, Dan? Well, you should be doing publicity. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, and, uh, let's you, talk publicity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you should, you should start local because the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the, uh, the Washington Post are not about to review your book. They, re- they review books by the biggest and best publishers. So many people on this line are probably self-publishing, which is perfectly wonderful. I've self-published a number of books. There's no disgrace in self-publishing. It's, it's a great business, and it's a great business model. But the New York Times Sunday Book Review section will never review a self-published book. But that doesn't mean that uh, the newspapers don't want to talk to you or television stations either, because they're always looking for experts. They're not necessarily looking for book authors uh, to review their books, but they're looking for experts to comment on breaking news. And uh, here's the funny thing. News breaks every 30 days, and it's the same news. So if you're a realtor, there's going to be a story every month about the federal government releasing information about housing starts and housing prices. And you can call your local real estate reporter and say, hey, uh, I I wrote a book about real estate. And if you need someone to quote about uh, the latest trends, feel free to call me because I know that on the certain day of the month, those new statistics come out. Well, it's not just realtors because people just call. If you're in careers, there are job numbers that come out every month. If you're in uh, sales and the gross national product, the GDP, comes out every month. There are lots of government statistics on labor, education, uh, and just about everything you can possibly think of, marriage, uh, health, on and on and on. Find your local reporters who write about those things. Make yourself available to them. And believe me, they will call you because they need to quote local resources. Local newspapers are in business to talk to local people and present the local angle. Otherwise, everyone would get national newspapers like the Washington Post or the New York Mm -hmm. Times or USA Today. Local Mm -hmm. papers need you. They just don't know that you're alive. So call them, make yourself available to them. And don't say promote my book, but just say, hey, uh, you might want to talk to me because I'm the author of this book and I have serious credentials. The book makes you an expert. And that's, that's what's really critical. You're talking about developing relationships. So why not? I mean, I'm always a big fan of reaching out to your weekly, the little weekly guys. And there's a lot of online. Here I am in Denver. We have a new that's been literally crowdfunded 
and they've got enough monies. They're projecting for two years. They've hired a lot of the reporters who are, who are no longer with the Rocky Mountain that went under and, and with the Denver Post that's still dripping along. Um, and they've come over here, and, you know, these people are writers. They're reporters, and they're looking to reestablish connections. And I actually did a, a donation to it myself to support it. Well, good for you. We need local newspapers. And, you know, these weeklies, they are, they are dying for information, and they love to interview <laughs> authors. In, in my local uh, – because sometimes – in my local weekly, uh, I'd say one every four weeks, they're, they're interviewing another author about a book that, uh, that, they, that, 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 they, that they wrote. It could be about anything. Uh, they just like the fact that someone locally is doing something important like writing a book. So mm -hmm. start there, uh, get your experience, and then work your way up. So you start with the weeklies, then the dailies, call the TV stations. There might be some talk radio shows in town that speak about, say, women's issues or business or real estate or personal finance. Almost every city has those four topics going on uh, at least once a week. So find out who they are and then get booked on those shows. Record those shows and put links to those shows on your websites and on social media. Then people say, wow, he's everywhere or she's everywhere. Or uh, they're really uh, important because they're on all these TV shows. I better check out uh, her book and see what, see what all the promotion is about. So that's how you get the ball rolling. And that's what's, to me, that's what's exciting um, to going on. So make the relationships, reach out. And, and you know, another way to do it for all of you are listening in and saying, well, where do I start? First of all, get a hold of a copy of it. A lot of them are throwaways, you know, the freebies. And if you see a little article, a lot of, you know, it has a byline of some sort and may have a signature on it with an email or a phone number. Pick up the phone and call and say, I really liked what you wrote and start developing a relationship. That's what I would be doing. Definitely. And then once you have that article, market the heck out of it. Send the article to everyone you know, your current clients, because they're only one phone call away from switching to another vendor. Send it to your prospects because they just need one more push over the fence to get them to buy from you instead of your competitor. Send it to your former clients because they, be, uh, they may need your services again, and uh, this may put you back into their universe saying, oh, yeah, I remember working with her. She was great. Uh, and now she has a new book out or she has this article that she sent me. I better call her up and see how I can work with her again. So send it to everyone who's important to you. Exactly. All right. So one more time, because we're, we're at wrap up here, Dan. The hour goes fast. So write your book in the flash is the book we're going to recommend that you get. And I even think for our old timers who have been writing for a long time, there are just oodles and oodles of tips in this book that would kickstart maybe an idea or, you know, Dan and I are both believers of the short is the new black and to get these books out a little bit faster, a little bit shorter. You don't have to write a 300 page, you know, a hundred, a thousand, 80,000 word tome anymore. People want shorter books. Dan, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Okay. All right. We'll see all of you next week. Have a great time writing and of course, publishing. of your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith riles each week